Hello, welcome to the third session of the pen and wash course. Today we're going to be looking at dry stone walls. Here are some examples of some dry stone wall little studies that I have done previously. Um, I think it's quite nice if when you do these you actually just sort of leave the dry stone wall sort of fading out to the side so you're actually not actually creating it right to the edge of the picture. I think it's much more pleasing if you sort of do this sort of thing. Um, it's up to you what sort of detail you put on. I mean, you can have little trees, you can have bushes, grasses, a little bit of fence, a bit of wire, whatever you like really. Here I've got a little gate and a post, um, a little bit of a moorland scene at the back here. Um, the colours we're going to be using, we're going to be using um, cobalt blue, a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of um, yellow ochre to actually paint the stonework. And it's also quite useful if you've got a little bit of white oil oil pasta or a little bit of um, candle um, just to do some wax resist, which helps actually give a bit of feeling of the stone and you get a bit more texture. OK, so I'm going to be working from several photographs when I come to do my, my little um, study. Um, I've chosen these, these ones because they've got some interesting different shapes and sizes of rocks. And this one's quite a nice composition because it's got a little bit of a gate post and a bit of barbed wire fence and a large sort of rock here in the foreground which makes it a bit more interesting so I'm going to do a bit of a composite of various things but before we start our main picture it's always a good idea to have a little practice now I'm just going to show you these little studies so you practice using the pen and washing out with water and also practicing using the different colors to get different different areas on the rocks to make them more realistic looking okay so I'm going to um, get yourself a piece of drawing paper, cartridge paper, or you can use watercolour paper for this study, um, and I'll do a little demo. Okay, so I'm just looking at this, this little piece of wall here, just as a guide really. Um, and what I'm going to do with using my fine liner pen is I'm actually creating the shapes of the rocks but making them really quite scribbly. People often tend to try and do these a bit too neat and tidy. If you're quite scribbly with it, I'm going to show you when you do your wash with um, some water to make the pen run, um, it's much more interesting. You get a much more rustic feel. Often people do this much too neat and tidy. They do the rocks all the same size and shape and it ends up looking like a neat and tidy little garden wall rather than a dry stone wall that's a bit more rustic. And I tend to say, Try and leave it a bit open-ended. I find it's much more interesting. And what I'm going to do is actually we can go in and fill in and change and add some scribbly marks in there to get the, the gaps and shadows in between the rocks. Right, I'll carry on and just do a little bit more to this and then I'll come back and show you wetting it. Okay, so I've added a bit more um, detail onto this one now, and I can come and I can actually wet that now with some water. If you want to, it doesn't work quite so well on cartridge paper, but you can actually use an oil pasta if you want to. And you'll see that on the rocks where you get little white splodges of lichen or different colour, you can, if you actually just put a few little marks on some of the rocks with your oil pastel, obviously you'll get a resist. There we are. Just done that a little, a little bit. Not too much. Now, just using clean water, I'm going to now wet the stones. And it's quite nice to sort of think about having a light and a dark side to your stone, I find. And actually you can do a wash and make one side slightly more... Sorry, bring the colour slightly more into one side of the rock than the other. Just puddle. Let the colour puddle. I'm just using a bit of water and just daubing and letting it puddle and run which is a much more natural look to it as well. You'll probably find it actually looks quite nice just by doing this actually without even adding any colour. And you can put a 
underneath and let the colour come and run down a little bit underneath as well, which is quite nice. It gives it a bit, you can sort of, there we are. Right, so I'm going to dry this off and then I'm going to, we're going to add some colour to it. Okay, I've dried it off now and hopefully you can sort of see if I hold this a bit closer to the camera, that actually just by doing the wash with the water, it gives it a really quite nice tonal quality and actually quite nice just like that without even adding any colour. But I will add some colour because you get some beautiful different browns and ochres and greys on the rocks, don't you? Some lovely things going on with the lichen. So I'm going to start off with the lightest colour, okay? So I'm always going to start off with a little touch of yellow ochre. You want it to be a, a very translucent wash, so you don't want to, quite a watery paint, actually, you want to do. And I'm just going to daub again, daub that on, because I want each stone to look slightly different. I might not, I'm not necessarily put it on every one. There we are, just a touch of yellow ochre. Now I'm going to go in with a touch of burnt sienna. Again, quite watery mix. So you'll get much more rusts and browns going on. But once I start adding the blues, when I add the cobalt blue, when it mixes with the sienna, you'll get shades of grey. And when it mixes with the yellow, obviously you'll get shades of green. So you'll get a nice sort of mix of colours going on, hopefully. I did that now I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt blue again really diluted and I say where I put it on top of the sienna you get shades of grey and you'll get sort of a nice mossy green of yellow which is quite nice there we are that just gives it quite a pleasing pleasing effect I'll just hold that so you can sort of see hopefully a little bit you get a nice range of different colours going on, which is much more natural. So have a little practice at this. You may take a few attempts to get it to look natural and not too neat and tidy. The, the key is getting the stones different shapes and sizes, the gaps between the stones as well, different shapes and sizes. A little bit of wax resist helps because I've, as you can softly see here, I've got some nice resist work going on where I've got little splodges of white, which is again adds to it, either light on the rocks or it looks like lichen growing. And then when you come to wet again, don't be too neat and tidy. Let the paint, the pen run around a bit and do, you know puddle so you get different different tone. And again with the paint, I'm just daubing it on, letting it run and working together. Okay, so it's not too too uniform. Okay, so have a little practice at that. You might say it may take a few goes, and then we're going to do the main painting. Okay, so we're ready to do our main painting. So I've got my watercolour paper taped down to my board ready and I'm going to be loosely basing mine on this little photograph here. Um, nice little bit of dry stone wall, a nice large rock in the foreground, a little bit of post and barbed wire. The main um, area of pit I'm interested in is this dry stone wall, but I'm just going to put a little bit of detail in the background, a little, some of the gorse bushes. And obviously a little bit of the sky and the hill in the distance so but I'm just going to keep it quite loosely based on this so here we go I'm going to start with the wall first only because that's obviously the main part of my image that I'm interested in so I'm just gonna just like we did before do a little study of the wall So I'm just going to carry on and work my way around doing a little bit of study of the wall and then I'll come back and show you the next stage. Okay, so as you see I have, I have sort of completed the dry stone wall. I've added a large rock here in the foreground, a couple of rocks, and now I need to put some a um, little bit of some fence posts on. So I drew a couple of fence posts. another one here coming up a bit of bush and another one here which is quite nice again keep them really quite loose and scribbly looking 
okay now the idea of a few little bushes so i'm just going to do a few quite scribbly little marks actually not, not much detail because this is going to be infilled a little bit with color so these are going to be gorse this idea of some gorse bushes here I'm also going to, later on, I'm going to put in some barbed wire, but I'm going to do that after I've added colour, because obviously, fine liner pen, this is going to run, and I actually don't want those lines to run, so I think I might leave it as a little bit of a... I might just leave it like that, actually, that's not too bad. And then, obviously, I need something in the distance, so I could just put a bit of sky in. Or I could put just a suggestion of a little bit of a hill. I might just put a tiny bit in. I don't want too much detail in here. Just the idea. Something going on in the distance. I don't want it to detract really from the dry stone wall because that's the main object of this picture. So that'll do just a little bit of a suggestion of a hill or something in the distance there. There we are. So... I'm now going to wet this um, and dry it off. So I'll make it all. The other thing I haven't done, a little bit of oil pastel on the dry stone wall. So I'm going to look at the stones and actually just add a few little splodges of white to some of these stones. <clears throat> Not too bad, otherwise I won't get any colour on it. I'm just going to hold that, hold it up to the light. You can sort of see where you've been a little bit, which is quite hard with this. Right, that'll do. Right, clean water. I'm just going to wet the pen and then dry it off the hairdryer before we add some washes. So just be a little bit aware of where you want your colour to run. So I don't want that to go into the sky area. So I'm going to bring that wet below the line and bring it down. Makes a lot of difference once you wet, as you can see. It starts to a bit of life to it, really. So I'm just going to dab that a little bit because I don't want too much pen on the bushes. So I'm just going to now again get that colour just bleed out a little bit. Turn a bit off if it gets a bit dark. So this is a really quick process, actually. This is such a good good technique to um, do when you're, if you're sketching or painting outside. It's so nice and quick and easy. You can even do this little study and then come and go take a photograph and do the painting later, you know, indoors if you want to, which I've done before as well. There we are. Just give it a bit of tone there. There we are. So I just dry this off and then we're ready to put a little wash of colour. Okay, so I've dried this all off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lightly wet the sky area. Just a little bit of clean water. And I'm going to use a diluted wash of cobalt blue. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just lift out a little bit of that colour with a tissue to give me a few clouds. need to be quite speedy because it dries pretty quickly. 
just this impression of a few little clouds in the sky that's fine there Oop. right now I always tend to work from the back of the painting forwards when I work so I, I'm going to now just put a little bit of colour on this distant moorland hill and my picture it's actually fairly sort of autumny colours so I'm actually just gonna come in here with a little bit of a wash of some ochre just going around the posts And what I might do is just add a tiny bit, bit more colour in there. I think I might just add in a tiny little bit of burnt sienna. Let's give it a bit more contrast, really. And I can always just dab that with a tissue a little bit. There we are. That's fine. Remember, we're just putting little washes on here. You want the pen marks still to show. Just going around that post a little bit there. I've got a bit of a white mark. There you go. That's fine. Now, I'm going to do the fence posts. Um, now, I've only got burnt sienna here. No, actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to do the dry stone wall first, and then we're going to look at the other details. Let's do that. And then I can think about colours for the other bits. Right, so I'm going to start off like we did before. Yellow ochre first. Um, just do a few splodges on here. Now the dress stone was quite colourful in this picture. She's got lots of lichen on it. It's quite nice. And here I've got a bit here. Okay, now I'm going to go in with a little bit of this burnt sienna. Lastly, a little bit of the cobalt blue. Now remember, the cobalt blue will turn your sienna into greys and your yellows into greens. Just add a tiny little bit more yellow ochre because I've got quite a lot of splodges of, of um, lichens on here. Just to give it the appearance of sort of dots of lichen. So I'm going to dry this off and then I can work on the other areas. Okay, so I'm going to mix a couple of colours together now to um, make the right sort of shade. So I'm going to mix together a little bit of um, the cobalt blue and the yellow ochre to make a sort of nice sort of mossy green. And I've mixed together a tiny touch of the sienna and the cobalt blue to make a slightly greyer brown. Um, so this is to paint some of these um, these gorse bushes. So I'm just daubing the colour on quite lightly. Just daub, and I'm going to later I'm going to splatter this with some yellow to give it a bit more life. There, that's made a nice sort of mossy green. 
and then I'm just going to use that sort of grey, slightly grey brown to um, do the fence posts. Whoopsie daisy. Oop. <laughs> Good job I didn't just splatter on my painting then. I just dropped my paintbrush. Oh. That was lucky. A bit of tissue. I've just got a big blob. There we go. <laughs> right. There, so I've just a little bit of colour to the fence post as you can see. Hopefully I'll hold that up and you can see here. Now, the other thing I need to do, I'm going to dry this off and then I'm going to do some splatters of yellow on the gorse bushes. Um, oh, I need a little bit of colour here in the foreground, don't I? Now, on my picture, it's a sort of very sort of sandy pathway, really. So I'm just going to do a little bit of yellow ochre, I think. A little watered down wash of yellow ochre. Just, just a suggestion of something there dragging the brush and maybe a touch of a touch of sienna in there as well maybe and that's enough stuff that the tissue doesn't need a lot just suggestion of something that'll do right i'm gonna dry i say dry this off and then i can do some splatters on the gorse bushes Okay, so it's all dry. I'm going to cover this little area here with a bit of tissue so I don't get yellow spatters up in the sky area. There. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my palette knife and do some yellow splatters on the gorse bushes. Now, I could use yellow ochre again, but that's not quite bright enough because the gorse flowers are very nice and bright and zingy, aren't they? So I'm going to be using a little bit of cadmium yellow for the flowers. And you can do this with anything. I mean, on some of the other examples, I'll show you again in a minute that I've spotted red to look like little little berries, which can look lovely. Um, right. So I'm just going to splatter here. Hopefully, get everywhere. Da -da -da. Gives it a bit more oomph. That's a bit nicer. Oopsie daisy, still managed to get some in the sky. Look, dab that off. Might wipe, just get that off with a bit of a clean water in a minute. And just dab, I'll get on the fence post as well there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I want to show you actually, I'm going to try and lift that out with a damp brush. So clean water on my brush. I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to scrub that little area there where I've got those dabs that I don't want. A bit clean tissue and lift there that's how they've gone that's good there we are so the only other thing i'm going to do i'm going to put in a little bit of shadow under these rocks here i'm going to use a little tiny bit of cobalt blue to create a bit of a shadow here under the wall Just there, that's better. And I'm actually just going to soften that with a bit of water. And the other thing I would like to do is put a little bit of barbed wire on this fence. So I'm going to do that with a pen, but I wanted to do it when it was dry. So I'm my my pen. I'm just going to come in. Well, actually, I'm just going to dry this off first, my splatters, because I'm going to put my arm over it and and I'm going to smudge it all. So I'll quickly dry that and come back. Okay, so I've dried that off now so I can put my hand on it without worrying about smudging it all. So I'm just going to add a little bit of barbed wire now to finish this off. So I'm just going to put a little broken line along here. All I'm doing is just putting some little little crosses on. Um, it's a little bit coming across here, just out of the picture. Ooh. 
a bloody wobbly line. It's going out of the picture. Um, I think that's all it needs actually. Maybe another one here. There's another one. I don't think I do actually. I'm just going to also just tidy up the side of those fence posts just a tiny bit. Just add a little bit more pen work just to define one edge a little bit more. That's it. That's better, sort of beefed it up a little bit. And the other thing I could do if I wanted to talk about a little bit of a grassy stem in here, shall I? I do like having a little bit of grass. So I'm going to... A little bit of a grassy bit there. And then I can just finish that off with a tiny little bit of colour using a, a finer brush. Let me grab my brush. Da, 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 da. Wasn't planning on doing that, but I just decided to do it on the spare of the moment because I, I like having little grassy stems. So I'm just going to get a little bit of sienna. I'm just going to come in. I'm just add a few little bits here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to Take the masking tape off, which always makes it a bit better. A little bit of ochre is nice as well, I think. There, that'll do. Just dab that with a tissue. And we'll take the tape off and have a look at it. And look, I'll show you the other samples again. Okay, so here's the finished painting or study, little pen and wash study. Um, hope you have a go because it's a lovely little technique, it's quite quick and easy, um, either looking at photographs or look at some of the dry stone walls we've got around us, they're so beautiful, um, they really are lovely, um, one of my favourite sort of subjects actually, I think this is just lovely, I'm just going to show you again some of the samples I showed you earlier, slight variation, we've got a little tree, a bit more grassy stems here, and the little fence going off in the distance. This one, I've actually used some red splatters on this one um, to give the impression of some berries and also some splatters to give autumn leaves on the tree. And this one, I've actually lots of splatters on the tree to give some autumn leaves. Um, it'll obviously say a bit, a bit more of a moorland and a gate in this one. I say do have a go because it's great fun. I really enjoy doing this. And um, if you do Facebook, please, would you, um, share some of your images with us that would be lovely there's also going to be a slideshow coming up of um, some students work that have done this with me in a class um, and next time we are going to be looking at moorland scenes so I hope you join us for the final session next time thank you bye